All right, it is Galaxy Note Day. We got the latest devices. These things just got announced. So as you can tell, no retail boxes yet. These are the sample devices in a couple of different colors. Of course, the exciting color is over here on the right hand side. This is a Aura Glow. And I don't know if you can pick this up, Jack, but I mean, that thing is totally glowing. Of course, this one with the glass back, wireless charging, wireless power share, and so forth. So the uh, the different part here compared to other Note launches, like the Note 9, for example, with the Note 10, we're going to have two different versions to choose from. You've got the Note 10 sort of standard, which is the smaller form factor. And then you have a Note 10 Plus, which scales up the Note series even further and also adds a couple of hardware upgrades. The black version is also called Aura, Aura Black. As you can see, it's sort of a more standard taste. I think, is there also gonna be a white one, Will, just for sort of special retail situations or certain markets? Or a white, okay, so we don't have that one represented, but there's gonna be another one as well. If you look closely, you can tell there's a slight difference between the standard note and the bigger note. That is this little extra camera lens here in the center. I believe that's a time of flight sensor. So that adds to the triple camera array that you see on the left hand side. This is gonna give you an ultra wide, a standard and a zoom. So the actual camera specification, 16 megapixel F22 ultra wide. You have 12 megapixel F15 and 24 with optical image stabilization. And you have a 12 megapixel F2.1 for the telephoto. Also, I'm noticing that the camera hump doesn't stick out too far. It's sort of in line with what you'd expect with this degree of cameras installed. Now, of course, it's the Note series, so you got the you got the pen included on all these devices. Apparently, it's a new design. Will was telling me it's a unibody construction, so I guess it's a little more sturdy. This one is in this cool kind of chromish, bluish, purplish color going on. It's got the button on the top, as you could tell. Okay, and it does, I mean, it feels sturdy. This is what I was curious about when rumors first started circulating that there was gonna be two different form factors. I was like, that's kind of strange because the Note series, it sort of made its name on being the biggest device. I mean, back in the day when the first Note series launched, people were like, that's crazy, who would ever carry that? They had to come up with crazy words like phablet. You don't hear that anymore, obviously. But now we have two, so it kind of, it's a bit confusing from that standpoint on like, well, what, what does the Note really represent? But of course they did the same thing that, that that pretty much every other lineup is doing in adding this plus model to just provide greater variation. So I think the power users are gonna go for the, for the plus model and then maybe the more budget conscious or people who really value single-handed portability functionality, they might go for the standard version as well. But we should talk about some of those hardware differences between the two. The battery on the little guy comes in at 3,500 milliamp hours, whereas the big one is 4,300 milliamp hours. So these are kind of the numbers you would expect for a flagship device along these lines. On this big guy, it's gonna be 3840, so WQHD+. Plus. On the little guy, it's FHD+. Plus. So as you know, with these types of devices, a lot of the battery life is consumed by the display and the pixels that are being pushed. That said, you can go into the OS on, on these Galaxy devices, previous Galaxy devices, and pick your resolution for, for the various attributes you, you may wanna select for. If you want better battery life, you could toggle back the effective resolution and so on. This is where you're gonna notice the other sort of uh, distinctive characteristic of this device, which is what they're calling the Infinity O display. Uh, that's this hole punch at the top here. So the whole the hole punch thing started with the previous S series devices, but they put it up to the side. It was in the top right corner, which I didn't mind. I thought, okay, this is an area where you've got some screen real estate to work with that's kind of underutilized to begin with in the top right corner. So I was like, that makes sense to put it up there. I made the argument for it at that time. That said, from a design perspective, it wasn't symmetrical. In this case, the hole punch has gotten smaller. Of course, it's a single camera cutout, as opposed to the plus model of the S series, which was a dual from facing camera cutout. It's a pretty aggressive screen to body ratio. There's a tiny little chin here, tiny little forehead and bezel around the edges. You have the typical screen glass screen curvature happening on the sides. But one thing I'm liking straight away is the fact that the bezel is near identical on the sides and top and only ever so slightly thicker on the bottom. So you don't have this effect 
where you're like noticing the fact that there's a chin on the device. So the devices are now both set up and this is your first glimpse into the display. I mean, it's kind of what you expect. These are maxed out on brightness right now and they're actually quite comparable. This one on the left is 6.8 inches and this is 6.3. Now, having handled them to set them up, I do have to say the little one is super comfy. So it's a bit unfortunate that you have to take a step down from a specification perspective. That said, you step up to the big guy and there's some advantages here as well. If you're a power user and so forth, you know, you get your YouTube open. I don't know which one more people are gonna opt for. Obviously, there's also the cost component. They're both gonna be expensive. Not that we expected anything different. So 950 to start on the little guy and 1100 to start on the big one. Now, to be honest, when I first started talking about these devices, the rumors and leaks started to come out, I was like, this one may, may break some price barriers. So somehow, even with an $1,100 starting price on a big one, I actually, I kind of think I expected it to be a little bit more, which is strange because we're just living in this $1,000 plus smartphone universe right now. Now you can spec this one out. Uh, presumably the 5G version is gonna be even more than that. But nonetheless, 1,100 bucks, 900 bucks. You didn't expect otherwise. Obviously. Now I should also mention, considering we're here in Canada, that's where the studio is based. Uh, I do have Canadian prices as well for these devices. You have $14.59 for the big guy and $12.59 for the little guy. Now both of these support 25 watt fast charging, but with the bigger one, you can actually charge up to 45 watts. So it is 45 watt capable, but you will need to buy a separate charger in order to take advantage of that. They do have wireless charging as well and wireless power sharing so the you can tap them together and charge one another oh i almost forgot the other difference this is an important one if you are that power user that i referenced earlier 12 gigs of ram versus 8 gigs of ram okay there let's do what we usually do let's get a quick reference here on the speaker quality i always test the speakers it's important to me most cash rich company oh wow all right world. so maybe you get like a nice that's uh i'm happy with AKG. that and then you don't have to cry it's got some low the end in it, which over. is typically what I'm looking for. It's this firing from and multiple and locations, so up around the earpiece, and uh, and also like from the, the bottom unit. Most of the sound, especially the bass component, out of the bottom one. You don't see a lot of them. They just never took off, really. This is what your black bars look like. But if I go ahead and zoom in, if I zoom in, this should give you an idea of how you like what it looks like when you fill the frame. I mean, it's a small hole punch. It's definitely an improvement on, on a notch, in my opinion, but you can get a sense for it right there. Well, fine, you have a small hole punch here, but like when it was up in the corner, it was kind of a bit more out of the way. And that's true. That's a bit of a trade off there, particularly when you're watching fully zoomed in video. I mean, you can see against the white background, you got this little black dot right here. Where this really has its benefits is when you're in the phone as a phone and not necessarily within a video where the symmetry just sort of makes sense to your brain, to your head. Like, as you can see, you know, your Wi-Fi, battery life, and so forth, they're almost the exact same height as this particular hole punch. And so, the, I don't know, there is something pleasing about the layout, at least the idea. This one being in a more typical location in the center gives you sort of the, the perfect framing for a selfie. I'll go ahead, actually, now would be a good time to showcase that. Okay, so it does have a wide setting but it's the same camera, so it's it's just a crop by the looks of it. HDR is on, but otherwise I think it's in its original status. Let's do what we do. There's a little glimmer in the eye. None of the, the highlights are not blown out. It goes beyond the actual beard hairs on that test. I mean, you could pick up the pores. I look for the detail. Now I'll go ahead and turn off the HDR though. It's on by default. I think most people are gonna use it. It's gonna save you from that highlight blowout that happens frequently, you know, you're in the sunlight and whatnot. So HDR is now off. It did not struggle either. Maybe on the tip of my nose there, there's a slightly more of a highlight, but I mean, that's a, that's a nice, that's just, that's just a nice looking front facing cam. I mean, I didn't expect it to, to not be able to perform in this department, but that's a satisfying performance right there. I'm happy with that. Okay, now what about the rear camera? We should also get a sense right now for the different focal ranges that are available. So the very first, of course, this is the standard mode. Boom. This is your wide 0.5. And this is your telephoto. Frame it up. Boom. All right. So telephoto giving you this field of view. 
wide, giving you tremendous field of view as expected. And then the standard, the standard one looks great. Ooh, the wide is very sharp. So to put this like in comparison, I think the last smartphone I shot, I noticed that the wide was substantially less sharp, particularly in the center of the frame when compared to the standard focal range or the default camera on the device. That's one area where I've noticed some discrepancy with these multi-camera smartphones. Contrast, saturation, white balance across the different cameras when you switch between them. But as you can tell here, these are all pretty interchangeable. Like you can, they're performing in a similar fashion in those various departments. Of course you have the pro mode if you wanna get crazy, change ISO, change your white balance, autofocus and, and whatnot. If you wanna do that independently, you could dive in there. There's also a night mode baked in. All right, lights going out real quick. We are effectively pitch black, but the phone is definitely not. I'm telling you, it's pitch black in here. I mean, not to you, you can see the, the shadows somehow. Look at the detail, it's incredible. In video stabilization here called Super Steady. Let's do just, I don't know, let's just do a quick clip here. I'm gonna move it around. Try to screw it up a little bit. <laughs> let's get this, oh, we lost that little figure. Let's put this lens right here. Wow. It was like a steady cam. I mean, feels pretty steady to me. Super steady. They are right. That is incredibly super steady. I mean, you would probably want to test this running about, jogging about out in public, but here in the studio, it looks pretty promising. Of course, it's also got the ultrasonic fingerprint pulled from the S series, the S lineup. And I mean, it works the same way. Three, two, it's fast. I like the fact that they didn't go overboard with the animation. And that's another area I should say, like Samsung's come a long way in the skin department from the days of TouchWiz to the One UI. For example, you see how you, you do the double drag there and all of a sudden you get this advanced sort of one-handed functionality, hence the One UI. And there you have it. I mean, it's, it's an exciting new phone. I think it's for a particular client, obviously. We know that these represent some of the most premium devices on the market, most importantly from a price perspective. And that's really the whole conversation in the smartphone game these days. I mean, I find myself talking about price so much because you're able to go out there and select. I mean, even from Samsung themselves, you could go pick an A-series now and say, look, that's enough, that's good enough for me. And these at the top end are increasingly becoming luxury devices. So you need to decide, like, is that extra money Am I getting the value out of it? Some of those added features, maybe a slightly bigger battery, maybe 12 gigs of RAM. Do I need 12 gigs of RAM? What am I doing? Am I gaming on the device? So on and so forth. The pen, I mean, what can we say about the pen? I never got fully, I was never a huge pen guy, but that said, every time I daily drove the, the Node series, I would, I would take it out from time to time, you know, especially for those extended sessions on the phone. There's something about the precision of the pen, which can be addictive, and maybe it could work into your flow somehow. Speaker sounded good, really fast charging. It is what you think it is. It's a very premium device with a premium price tag from Samsung. I think, I think a lot of you guys are gonna be impressed with it. I would like to stick my SIM card in it. Unfortunately, I can't just yet because these are sort of pre-release models. I'll probably have a retail version coming very shortly. There you have it. It is the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus for the first time, two options in the Note series. There it is. This episode is brought to you by dbrand. Now you probably know dbrand makes skins. What you may not know is that they make cases and screen protectors. The Prism screen protector has a unique plug-in applicator that makes it easy to line up. The grip is a customizable phone case that allows you to change up the look of your device with any dbrand skin. Right now you can get 20% off site-wide using the code UNBOX. Check them out at the link below.